Hey guys, welcome back to another Advice Adventures. Now, before we start this off, I have something that I need to say. On my first one, you guys gave me a lot of really positive feedback saying that you really appreciated the things that I said, especially about bipolar, um, that you just appreciated not feeling alone. And, you know, the comments were just blowing up with just kindness and you guys really, really liked it. That being said, there was one person who didn't have a profile picture or any kind of validation or anything, but said that she was a healthcare professional and that she didn't appreciate me giving you guys stuff that or advice that wasn't coming from a health professional, that she didn't like that I read the definition of bipolar off from WebMD, and that she was afraid that people would go and start self-medicating and doing all these harmful things to themselves because of my advice. Now, with that being said, I have to say, and I've said it probably four times in that video, as long as in the description box and the before and after of that video, that I am not a professional. And I just thought that people would like advice from someone who's actually living the illness. Now, I would never tell any of you guys to do something that I'm not a professional in. You know, I would never give you guys... Um, things to do to self-medicate. You know, I would never tell you not to seek a professional if you feel like you or someone else has a mental illness, but you're not diagnosed. That always, always, always takes place in a health professional office and a mental health clinic. And I thought that I was very, very clear about that. But of course, everybody has their opinions. And she ended up blocking me or deleting her comment or whatnot. Um, after she got very rude and pretty much insulted the series, which just goes to show that I'm probably helping people and others just don't like it. Now, that is not going to deter me from keeping this advice series on my channel. I just, you know, I do need to agree with the fact that I am not a professional and the things that I say are merely advice from one person to another just for you guys to take that into consideration in choosing whether you need to seek professional help into feeling not alone into just some tips you know just some advice this is for entertainment this is for fun this is this is for us to not feel alone this is for us to connect this is not for me to replace any kind of professional health or mental health kind of physician or psychologist or therapist in any way and i need to make that very 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 clear but anyway, let's get into this series. So we are going to touch upon potty training boys and discipline for children. And we're going to also touch on noticing bipolar tendencies in children and the things that kind of associate with that. So this is going to be kind of like a little kids series in the advice adventure. So let's just get right into this. <laughs> Now, the first thing is potty training boys. Now, I have a girl and I have a boy. And I was very close as a stay-at-home mother raising both of them. Um, I raised my daughter until about a year old and then I got a job. So, I was a stay-at-home mom for the first year of her life and I've been a stay-at-home mom my son's whole life. So, potty training was a big kind of Nikki thing. And I can honestly say that for my children personally... And for a lot of people that I see around me that have boys and girls, boys are very hard to potty train. They're a lot harder than girls and tend to take longer in potty training than girls do as well. But it does differ from person to person. Every kid is different. Every situation is different. With my son, he is two and a half and he's just starting to potty train. He's still in diapers, um, but he does go pee in the toilet when he has to go. He forgets every now and then and he doesn't even try to poop anywhere but his diaper and at night is the same kind of situation so we're kind of dipping a toe in we are getting there and I've spoken to his doctor about it I've spoken to many many people my mother etc etc and pretty much all of them say that you can enforce 
you can try to enforce like the want to do it, but you can't push your child into potty training. They will just do it when they're ready. And I mean, I agree to that to a certain degree, but I mean, what do you do if they're like three, four, five years old and they're still not potty trained? You know, obviously then you go to your primary physician, you know, your child's doctor, and you guys can work some things out as to what may be missing, why there's a delay there. Um, but what we do personally, like what I do to just kind of positively reinforce my son to think about going to the bathroom more often is we do an hourly kind of thing where every hour we say, hey, you got to go to the bathroom. Let's go to the bathroom. And we take him into the bathroom and we started with him being in the bathroom while my husband was. So my husband would go pee and then he'd be like, look, I'm a big boy and I went pee in the toilet. And that's what started getting my son to want to dip his toe in and not in the toilet, but you know what I mean? Like dip his toe in and started going to the bathroom. Now he, with the pooping, I have no idea what to tell you guys because I'm still stuck in that situation. He don't want nothing to do with pooping on the toilet. Nothing, nothing, nothing. But I will tell you guys that with my son, he didn't want anything to do with the little kid potties. Nothing. He is starting to potty train on an actual adult toilet. We tried the little kid potty and all he wanted to do was store his toys inside of the toilet. He never went to the bathroom in there. He used it as a stepping stool to wash his hands and put toys in. He never used it. So that was a huge waste of money. But he loves the big potty. And he'll just stand right up like a normal guy and go to the bathroom. So, I mean, it's just positive reinforcement. You know, be consistent with every hour reminding them and asking them if they have to go to the bathroom. You know, take them in there. Let them watch you go. Let them see that, you know, it's not dangerous. It's not scary. It's not going to kill you, you know. So, it, it just soothes them, you know, and it reminds them, which a lot of kids need reminding because they're just too busy with life, with loving life and playing with toys and watching shows and world domination. They don't have time to go pee. Now with disciplining, we are in the terrible twos, the terrible twos right now. My daughter didn't have the terrible twos. She had the terrible fours, fives, and every age up. But my daughter also does have ADHD and other kind of mental things going on um, that kind of keep her and hold her back a little bit. Um, you know, where disciplining is different than it would be with my son. Um, my son fully has a terrible tooth. He's a very, very smart child and he's pushing those boundaries. You know, he's pushing those boundaries to see you know, where we'll bring him back in, you know, like when they get to a certain age and they start understanding things, um, they start not liking the word no, you know, they will push you to see how far they can go. And that's what he's doing. He pushes us, you know, if we tell him to do something, no, you know, like he yells and he's starting to hit and the sharing is impossible and you get him into a store and he screams at the top of his lungs if he doesn't get what he wants or if he can't walk around the store. If we put him in a cart, Lord save us if we put my child into a cart because he will freak out and he has so lovely learned how to say, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you from his sister. So discipline is something that we have to be consistent with. I don't believe in that. I wasn't raised that way. I think that I got spanked twice my whole life and we were not good kids and got spanked maybe twice and they weren't even spanks. I mean, it was like on my butt and I'm just like, ah! you know, just because of the thought of what it was, not because it hurt or anything. But I mean, I grew up with friends who got beat with rulers, who got beat with belts, who got the crap beat out of them. And they're no better of a person today than I am. You know, like they have struggles because of it. And if you raise your child that way, I have also noticed, and it's scientifically proven that your child is more likely to do the same thing to their kids. And it's just not good. You know, when your child is, say my son's age, two and a half, the only thing that he learns from me spanking him or being any in any way physical with him um, for discipline is to do that to somebody else. It's only teaching them that it's okay to hit other people when you're angry or when you don't like what they're doing. And it just doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. You know, I've tried that avenue with my daughter. I've tried it because she has ADHD and she has a very negatively aggressive 
form of it. So when she gets angry, she gets violent. She gets, you know, very, she's throwing stuff around. She's threatening. And I have taken that avenue a couple of times with her. And all it did was make her more aggressive, more angry. It did nothing. So we don't do that in my household. We do not spank. We don't do any of that. We do timeouts. We take away technology because these days taking away kids' technology is like murdering them. So we take away technology. And my husband came up with a great idea as to, you know, grounding them. And when they are grounded, and this is more for my daughter than my son at this moment, but when he gets a little bit older, he will be participating. But she has to clean the toilets. She has to wash the dishes. She has to mop the floor. You know, she has to stay in her room all day unless it's to go to the bathroom or eat her meals. You know, it's stuff that is just takes away from them being able to be happy because of doing something wrong, you know, and not being able to do any kind of extracurricular activities, no fun at all. There's no fun in this house when they are grounded. And the problem I see with people with it not working for them, with their kid just not caring, is because a lot of the parents just aren't consistent with it. You have to be consistent. And this is something that me and my husband even struggle with. You have to be consistent. When you tell them something, when you warn them, if you do this, this is going to happen. Make sure that you do that every single time, no matter how tired you are, no matter how much you just want to get them to be quiet. You know, just give them what they want to get them to be quiet. Don't do it because it is so detrimental, detrimental, detrimental whatever. It's just harming the whole situation. It's undermining yourself and it's making your kids respect you a little bit less. It's making them respect your authority a little bit less. So consistency is key. And with a two-year-old, with my son, what I have found is best is they're always go, 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 go. You know, they always, always have like, they're like a fish. They have like a one second memory kind of thing going on. They're always on the go. But when you tell them no, when you tell them they can't do something, when you tell them something's bad, they will instantly throw a tantrum, like throwing themselves on the floor, crying, yelling, giving that anger back to you, you know, giving that frustration back to you. I found what works best is to be like, oh, well, we can't do that, you know, being in an uplifting voice, and then redirect them, you know, redirect them. You say, oh, well, we can't do that, but let's go do this, you know, something that's more fun or something that's going to catch their attention. And that has saved my life in a grocery store many, many times, many times. So, you know, if you're in a pinch in a grocery store, redirect. If you're home, redirect and be consistent with it, with any form of discipline that you choose to give your child. Because, I mean, I may not believe in spanking, but one of you may, you know, that may work for you. That may work for your children or your family. You know, I'm not judging anybody's form of discipline as long as you're not like beating the crap out of your kid, because that's illegal and it's not right. And it just, causes very angry adults. It just grooms very angry adults that do that for generations to come. And it just doesn't work. It's been proven it doesn't work. You know, but I don't want to judge anybody's way of parenting because I would be so pissed if someone did that to me. These are just what works for me. You know, like consistency and redirecting. You know, take away technology, take away their fun because that's all kids care about. So, the more consistent you are with that, even if they have to go a month every day, no fun, and you have to spend all your energy in making sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do while they're grounded, just do it. Because after a while, it's going to become routine and it's going to be conditioned into them. So it just, it makes it easier. You know, you got to take the hard road to get to the easier road. You know, you have to take the hard road to make sure that your children are good people in the future, I guess. So that is my advice on that. Let's get to the next topic, which, oh God, I'm not a professional. I'm not a professional. I need like a fucking red light that's like, boop, boop, boop. she's not a professional. She's actually fucking crazy herself. Boop, boop. Just joking, you guys. But anyway, let's get to another topic. Now, the topic is bipolar and the effects on kids and seeing the same signs in them. Now, since, since my daughter was about three or four, she started having issues. And she started having angry outbursts. And this was an alarming thing for us merely on the fact that she was always so sweet and shy and kind and lovable. And then just out of nowhere, bam, you know, like angry, fit throwing, 
trying to stab us with forks, um, threatening us with darts, you know, telling us that she wanted to die, that she hated herself. And she didn't come from a family that's like this. We are a very, very loving family. People around us kind of pick on us about being like the Partridge family. We're a very close unit because we're all kind of introverts. So we're all just our family units, you know. We don't have a lot of outsiders coming in. And, but she had school and stuff and friends. But little did I know she was being bullied in school. I found that out a little bit later on. But she started having a lot of issues. She couldn't focus on her schoolwork. She was very, very shy and reserved, but also had these outbursts and wouldn't listen to her teacher. Now, every time I ever asked my daughter what was going on, how she was feeling, because that's all I could say is, what's going on? What's wrong? How are you feeling? Because with kids, you can't say, hey, are you feeling this way? Is this how you're feeling? Is this what you're, you know, feeling inside? Because then you're just feeding them to just agree and you can get false information from your child. You never want to try to direct what they're saying. You know, you want to try to ask them what's going on in a way that only they can answer that without any kind of leading from you. So I only ever said, you know, what's going on? What do you feel inside when this happens? And she started telling me things that made me bawl because they were 2AT exactly how I felt my whole life and how I feel even today was suffering from bipolar, BPD, and anxiety, and OCD. I have a lot of mental illnesses, and they all kind of entwine and coincide with each other and feed each other. And the things that she was telling me, it was like we were looking in a mirror at each other. And I was like, oh my God, you know? And I instantly was like, does she have bipolar? So we took her to the doctor, you know, instantly took her to her, her pediatrician, and then we saw a mental health professional, and my daughter is in therapy as of now because she's on medication, and they're still working with her, and it'll probably be a lifelong thing, um, but I instantly thought she had bipolar. I was instantly like, oh my god, I gave it to her. Um, with that, you know, boys are actually more likely to get bipolar genetically from their parent than a girl, but obviously, girls get it too. So, I... I'm concerned for both of my children and I do keep an eye out for that. You know, I do keep an eye out for the signs. Um, and the only thing that's hard with it is a lot of doctors and pediatricians and psychologists, they don't want to go that deep in a child because the medications can be, they can wreak havoc on a child's brain because the brains are still growing. So they don't want to take that route. So they instantly go to ADHD or ADD. I mean, I've noticed that. Doctors, I sat in my doctor's office, my child's doctor's office for 10 minutes before he's like, oh, she's got ADHD and put her on Adderall. And it was a struggle. And I mean, we will have to probably, if you guys are interested, I can tell you, you know, in the next advice adventures, we can go through my struggle that I went through and I'm still going through with my daughter and her mental health. But you will see those signs, you know, but you can't automatically go, oh, they have exactly what I have, especially because we're not professional. You know, we're not a professional health person. We don't, we don't know. We just see those signs. You know, the things that she was telling me, she's like, mommy, I feel nice things inside of me and I want to say nice things, but when I talk, they don't come out. And then at times I hear my own voice in my head telling me nasty things. That's exactly what happens to me to a T, you know, but you just can't go there. You know, you have to let the doctors do their job. If you feel like your child may have something mentally going on, take them to the doctors. Express your feelings, you know, keep a log, an activity log of everything that happens, you know, the, the date and time and what the child did. So when you go see your doctor, you can give them that and they can go over it, you know, and they can evaluate your child and they can see that there's an issue. But I can tell you from someone who has seen it in their child and who is going through mental things with their child, it's heartbreaking. It broke me when I found out she had something wrong with her that did come from my side of the family that she could possibly have the mental illnesses that I have, the struggle. She could be struggling right now. It broke my heart. It broke my heart into pieces to know that my child will forever be on medication and struggling her whole life because she came out of me. So that is everything I want to discuss in this advice adventures. I really hope that you guys like this and you don't think that I'm trying to give you professional, professional advice. You know, I'm just, I'm trying to make you guys not feel so alone. Kind of like girl talk, you know, just on a deeper level and about serious issues and not just YouTube issues, you know, just serious issues, life issues and give you my advice. You don't have to take it. Um, I definitely 
definitely should never replace professional help. Um, I just want to give you guys my advice so you guys don't feel so alone. But always, always, if you feel like you're in danger, if you feel like you can't handle things, if you feel like there is something wrong, always seek professional help. Do not seek Nikki Murphy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and don't forget you can email me anytime with more topics. I will keep this going as a weekly thing if I get enough topics. So um, as of right now, I think I need one more topic for next week. So if you guys want to email me, I will leave that down below for you guys and make sure you tell me if you want to stay anonymous or not. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.